Welcome to South Aussie Shooting Channel. This is part of our four wheel drive series. This is about the Intervolt DCC Pro in vehicle DC to DC uh, battery charger. I purchased this for the uh, Prado 120, uh, but this can be used for RVs and uh, any type of uh, vehicle that uses a battery, um, caravans, and all sorts as a charging source for auxiliary battery. I got this from Opposite Lock uh, Windsor Gardens and they uh, run me through um, their own vehicle setups and how it works. Um, I've also looked at many other different types of uh, DC chargers, um, the Red Arc and um, Projector and all those other ones that um, are available and this one stuck out to me um, the most uh, in terms of um, uh, the guys at uh, Opposite Lock uh, explaining everything. Um, I was going to go for the uh, Red Arc system uh, but I decided to give somebody else a go and uh, check out these intervolts. They're fairly expensive, uh, this is about $544.50. This is uh, just for the uh, unit and the monitor. The monitor comes with the charger and the Red Arc ones don't. Uh, they're bought separately. Um, so this one I thought would uh, it would be better uh, to get uh, with the monitor in it and I didn't have to spend the extra money on the uh, Red Arc uh, gauges that they've came out. I'm going to go through what's in the, uh, the instructions and how it works and then I'll go outside to the car and show you how I've uh, wired it in, what it looks like and um, how it runs. Uh, on the box here it's a 25 amp uh, 12 volt system and uh, can be used in anything from forward drives, RVs, caravan, camper trailers um, there's the little monitor here it says what the um, current is that's going through and the voltage and whether it's uh, what it's charging here it's a SLA boost it's got an audible signal uh, the box has serial numbers up here has a diagram of what the how the system is put in which is very simple and it's one of the reasons why I've uh, purchased this uh, battery management system is it's uh, really easy to understand and do yourself which I have done uh, just to two batteries, your main battery, uh, this runs on solar as well, uh, it's a, its own solar regulator and can charge a vehicle um, when the vehicle is off. Uh, this is a screw-in system with uh, using little rings um, in, in under there, they're about 4.5 millimeter mounting screws and um, has a base cover as well with a little LED in the center that changes colors to tell you if it's charging or if there's a problem with the unit. The negative here, uh, ignition and uh, auxiliary battery and uh, the main power and this here connects to your monitor and um, you can run this uh, separate uh, from ignition so you don't have to run it with ignition and also you don't have to run a monitor at all with this unit and you can just leave the main unit on and that little indicator will tell you if it's working or not the back of the box there's nothing on it the side of it here is just another picture of it the monitor connected uh, this side here it tells you what's in the box uh, you got 3 meter cable, uh, LCD screen and the device itself. Uh, it says here that it's Australian made as well and operated. Um, solar compatible at 100% recyclable packaging. Um, the box opens from the bottom 
and the unit come with instructions and normally you have the, the device in here and the cabling these are the instructions on how to use it an operation uh, manual uh, it has here the first page is thank you for choosing the product and uh, the DC the DC charger is designed to charge a secondary battery using the main battery as a charging source independent of the vehicle's charging system there are several features and benefits which set the DCC Pro apart from the current offerings and um, it says Amalek Australia Payload a wholly owned and Australian operated private company is proud owner of Intervolt brand and trademark it's registered with over 20 countries worldwide and product specialised in power conversion products for over 10 years and they're assembled in house in Perth, Western Australia from both local and imported companies they're based on quality, performance and value they're committed to development of DC power control and conversion field with routes in commercial marine transport alternate energy and allied industries and uh, intervolt products are designed to cope with demands of harsh applications in high temperature and high humidity environments they are constructed of quality materials marine grade where applicable and designed to provide years of continuous service The introduction here to the standard dual or multiple battery arrangement the system will consist of a starting or main battery and secondary auxiliary batteries for clarity and niceness will refer these throughout the manual and the main auxiliary batteries as a concept of our vision DCC Pro was a device which would not only provide anonymous charging method for an auxiliary battery but would reliably accurately and repeatedly provide feedback to the operator of the status of the charging maintenance process in order to provide the information necessary to integrate a visual display the addition of a remote display also provided the opportunity for a level of operator input allowing some control of the device such as selection of battery types for example development of true remote user interface enabled the concept to evolve into the product which you have purchased it uh, consists of three main components and these complete plug and play and are all necessary aside from the external wiring to implement a full operational charging maintenance system for delivery battery that comprises of a, a charging device the remote display and the cable it just says the contents here the application here DCC Pro is a solid electronic device developed for the purpose of charging and maintaining additional batteries and designed to work in all of the full drives and stuff that I was saying about it's not uh, designed for marine applications warranted um, it's designed for shaling conditions and harsh environments um, DTC Pro is a standalone power conversion device which utilizes the host vehicle's main battery as a sole power to develop its own output charge and a variety of different battery types according to the specific charging requirements as no modification to the vehicle's wiring is required ensures the manufacturer's electrical system is not compromised in any way it uh, 
It's highly capable device with many features. An operator control monitor charging status from the comfort of the cabin. It uh, is also you can run in old or new vehicles, sim simple or complex, without a CAN or LIN controlled electrical system. In order to understand it, uh, the manual read it as entirely to understand the basics of however it's only necessary to review the installation and operation pages set up this uh, synopsis is uh, tells you the battery uh, that it can do the lead calcium gelified absorbed and standard lead acid um, there's a consistent voltage supply of 13.2 volts which can be used as a float only charging device this can be utilized where the battery being charged and not cycled but it is used as a backup or support source which is a security system for example although the DCC Pro uses the main batteries as a primary charging source it is fully solar enabled and a dedicated input provided direct connection to the compatible solar panel without the need of assistance of a regulator. Solar charging function uses sophisticated algorithms for maximum power per point tracking to capitalize out on any available solar power to optimize the charging process with availability to be voltage or ignition controlled the DCC Pro has flexibility to adopt to most any application furthermore the ignition control function always selection for normal or low ignition input to cater traditional ECU control systems got here the charging modes there's two optional modes the charging system uh, there is voltage uh, control mode which is the default allows charging process to or automatically independent of the host vehicle this is recommended for insulation where it's not viable or necessary to use the host vehicle's ignition switch to enable or disable the charging device voltage mode would primarily be used for charging device in located in the caravan or camper thus a long way from the switch source and a diagram here of it by itself without an ignition source. Ignition control is selectable with the motors recommended for auxiliary battery mounted in the vehicle, in the engine bay or the tray for example. In ignition mode a control wire is predominantly connected to the charging device from the vehicle's electrical system and it's permanently connected to the charging device um, it can be connected or disabled and ignition is turned on off respectively charging mode is battery to battery charging And then you have the solar to battery charging, which is uh, utilized a standard 17 to 27 OCV. It's uh, directly connected and can be unregulated. Use of a regulator will not allow the charging control to operate correctly as a result. And it provides a benefit of 30% greater efficiency than a standard PWM type regulator.
explains what that system looks like. This is a diagram of how it's connected uh, normally to a vehicle and that has solar power connected. This is how mine is connected. It's very simple. You just have the battery here, connect it to the main auxiliary, positive to positive. Ignition is a positive, so you can find a positive in the um, windscreen wiper motor. I've told to do that that way, or any other positive that's connected to an ignition. The monitor connects to its own socket. The negative just connects to any body of the uh, vehicle. Solar power up is just a positive and negative without any regulation on it. Uh, this type is for running two systems. Uh, you have two systems, they're hooked up exactly the same way. So this one can be in the caravan, this one can be in the vehicle, and that will be connected uh, to this. Uh, separate monitoring. It has an A and B mode, and you can switch between uh, which one to see what's working. So I'm just explaining to do the installation. Don't really need to read that one. Because I'll explain. got four little screws on the other side basically you'll just drill that into wherever you're mounting it uh, drill it all in take the little cover off this is the wiring and it just tells you how many much you would need to uh, depending on the meters of how long the wire is on the positives I just got my uh, electrical shop to go and uh, give me whatever wire that I needed and they know their stuff so they use whatever the wire that they normally use for uh, wiring. I uh, used a home of 12 volts for this, um, Ingle Farm, up that way and uh, they were really helpful and uh, pretty much uh, installed it for me. Um, that uh, cost extra as well for the wiring for this as well um, this is just a data cable which is mounting the little screen inside your car you can either drill into the firewall or you can just uh, use the existing hole same thing here it's just got a little adhesive strip or you can drill into your panels Uh, this one here is a, a connection configuration, so when you set it up, uh, you put all the what battery it is and um, if your vehicle has an ECU in it or it doesn't, and uh, it explains what numbers uh, correspond to the different uh, battery types, so one is lead acid, two is AGM, three is gel, four is calcium, and five is consistent flight. And connecting the data cable there's a little spot on top of the connector that you'll see on top here that just plugs in and uh, make sure that you put the uh, monitor inside the car beforehand and run that through the firewall or else you'll have trouble connecting it you don't really have to but there is a connection that in the end that you can take off and on which is this little bit here you can run through that through the firewall easier than you can the big one. Connecting the negatives uh, first to your system here. Whilst it's already been mounted, you connect the other negative from the main battery and also the negative from the device to the body of the car. Uh, the ignition wire is next, so plug that to the ignition positive to the wiper wires or anything that uses ignition 
while the car switched on it comes on and when the ignition is off then that's off it's not running consistently directly to the battery configuring on here it will say configure the screen once it's plugged in then up here you will select the battery then it will say ignition is the next step yes or no up or down push ok goes to the next one you can either put normal or ECU which is mine is ECU so it will be low go to the next one and then once it's all done it will say all good and then if there's any problems it will have error message and you will just have to undo a negative and put it back again to get that configure back up the operation here the little light will come on it will tell you what you need to do hooking up solar you'll just need to put the positive to the positive of the solar and then that's it screw the lid back on um, it's just explaining how to pull the cord out with some pliers if you wanted to add the second battery then you'll just need another system and plug that same wire into that same uh, monitor it, you don't need another monitor it automatically buy another one it has a buzzer as well if there's any problems with the charging system it will buzz this is just explaining what the uh, monitor is trying to tell you by the voltage and the lower number is the voltage that's in your battery at the moment and the top one is the one that's actually your auxiliary battery it says the amperage that your charge is uh, doing while the car is running watts is what your solar panel is doing when the car is off um, and a display message on the bottom it has a battery icon on the top here to say that how, how it's charging uh, it's an audible alarm, there's a little alarm there is the alert icon, there's a little caution sign A and B is just whether or not you have your systems uh, on and it's glow ring changes colours it's just one that explains how to turn things off and on having audible alarm, you can do this by holding the OK button down changing the backlights higher or lower the lower it is the better uh, power you're saving the monster takes the power from the battery and uh, this is the charging state uh, solar charging will be full bars with the flashing boost charging which is when it's on completely nothing in the battery and then it will jump up it will keep going around up one bar just like a normal phone charger boost charging is a full uh, battery and uh, boost charging is a full battery as well I'm just saying whether it's below the voltage or above voltage floating as well it will say on the bottom what it is float charging here it's saying that the main battery is 12.4 and the auxiliary is 12.7 and it's in standby mode which is the car will be off then we have here the amperage that it's charging at it's 25.1 amps with a gel battery and your auxiliary battery is 12.7 whilst charging it's saying here that it tells you what what it's doing whether it's a boost or charge or float and that's the battery uh, your solar here it says it's 100 watts and the auxiliary battery is at that it will have a PRM here and for solar
and the different color lights that uh, happens when it's on white, it's on standby aqua green is on solar silent solar is aqua green purple is setting up when you're configuring it or flash purple uh, blue is continuous boost and blue green is absorption green continuously is float which is normal uh, this will be on all the time when it is charging Red is means bad volt, yellow is low voltage and orange is high temperature and it will shut off automatically and uh, if it's above the 85 degrees then it will turn back on when it is cooled down and it just explains uh, alert conditions uh, when you've got power cutting out and charge is not working properly or when the system cuts on or cuts off and tells you how to fix them different error messages that you'll see on the screen here depending if you've got solar on or solar off um, here is the specification it's a 9 to 17 DBC with a 27 VOC max open current no load it's 250 watts uh, normal uh, 25 amps continuous at 50 degrees Celsius um, it charges a 14.4 standard battery a glass mats 14.6 volts 14.2 for the gelified and lead calcium is 14.8 float charges 13.2 has thermal overload shutdown Electrical overload shutdown, over voltage uh, reconnection, over voltage disconnection, and reverse polarity so you can uh, save of not uh, getting electrocuted. It's IP67 rated, uh, IP40 dust and water resistant, uh, 20 degrees minus 20 degrees, so it works at minus 20 degrees to plus 85, uh, it's 98% humidity. Um, all the stuff that's made out of and uh, temperature resistant plastics 304 stainless steel and uh, the dimensions and the grams it is um, fairly light fairly small which I was happy with with the room in the engine bay and that's pretty much the whole book um, just says how to um, do stuff as well when you got solar connected it gives examples of how things work and if you're running the device in heat um, ignition control mode and it tells you whether it's low or high voltage um, what it does what the boost voltage does and it has scenarios of problems if you're having trouble and now we'll go out to the uh, vehicle and uh, check out how I've installed it and how it actually works. This is the intervolt system inside the car with the cap on and uh, this has the little ring here that displays how the device works with its green light on it flashes intermediately while the car's off to say that it's in standby mode which is a white flash it is hooked on to the ignition wiring which is up here uh, it's connected which is this wire here there's a negative uh, that is hooked to the body here and there's wiring and also a breaker here for the power to go inside the vehicle it goes to this battery here and uh, this battery system is from eBay, it's $135. Um, it's uh, designed for this Prado 120 and it has the power steering reservoir relocator, which is very fiddly um, to try and put on. It fits an N70 size battery, which is an Amptec 105 milliamp. Um, it has the normal standard terminals here with also the accessory terminals and um, 
it goes all the way from underneath here. We've got wiring that goes through here up to another supercharged battery. Our uh, battery is maintenance free and it is hooked up to the positive here, positive terminal, uh, which is closer to the oil filter and runs just from the back here all the way down underneath here and back through up the radiator mount all the way up to the other side connecting to here and uh, you can install this uh, heat shield protector I put it on afterward so you can actually move it out and put it on beforehand about 2 meters or 3 meters of wire here it's very easy to install and it's just zip tied on comes up underneath here through the top at the side here down the bottom on the side here there's a negative down the bottom so it has brackets for a negative switch then we have our breakers to get the power to the inside of the vehicle okay so pretty much here and blue flash very uh, neat put in there just got those plastic bits to cover the, uh, the engine it's made in the middle on the bottom here where the fins are to as a heat sink it's worked flawlessly hasn't uh, stopped working uh, in the heat it's very hot under this engine um, never really used this battery yet um, for running fridges and stuff it uh, goes all the way back to the car on the passenger side but inside here is the monitor which is here and it will turn on when you push the OK button and it will display the voltage in there so the main battery is 11.8 volts and the auxiliary is 12.4 so it's uh, running a bit low because I haven't ran the car for a while and that just runs up underneath here and the bar wall back there. Gonna start the car up and check out the monitor. The car will turn on. You look that much, oh baby, you should go and love yourself. And it will come on automatically with the ignition control saying it's a normal uh, standard lead acid battery on boost uh, it's going 7.5 amps and the main battery is 12.9 it normally is on float because I'm normally driving the car all the time but obviously it's got batteries gone low so the amperage is uh, climbing up and also pressing the OK button it will tell you the voltage that main battery is 14 volts it's charging now and the main one is 13.6 you can see the little battery going up which is saying it's very low because normally it doesn't do that and then once it reaches a certain voltage then it will go with the lower amperage Just constantly changes uh, amperage and volts. And whilst inside, you'll see that the device is charging with the uh, blue here, which is uh, <coughs> loose. It normally flashes green, but I've been driven the car for a while, so it's charging. very quietly. The fans also create air. So it also pulls down the unit, which is what placed on the wheel, wheel up the top here, away from the exhaust. 
a bit crowded here. There will be a snorkel later on set in. Um, you may need to take the battery off to uh, get the snorkel set in. Um, that's the only problem is with these cars is there's not a lot of space to uh, work with. The positive wires um, for running power to the vehicle is uh, going through the back here onto the firewall up through here and through the passenger side down the bottom and it will go through the bottom of the passenger footwell it will come out here and you'll have to put the wiring down the floor all the way back here keep on going underneath you'll have to keep on coming underneath here run it here and as soon as you get it into here you'll have to undo this whole section and then this whole panel here at the back comes out that's where you'll put the uh, switch down here but to get this off you'll need to undo the bottom of this down the back here as you can see here I got this from home tour bolt as well, which is an Anderson plug, a USB port with a 5 and 2 amp, a normal socket down the bottom here, and a display voltage. So when I push the button down here, it will actually display what the voltage is left in the uh, auxiliary battery. It's actually 0.1 volt different. It's actually 12.5 there. And it says 12.5 for on the, the, uh, the auxiliary battery. And there's a little sticker there that tells you the percentage of the battery. It tells you that it's on there as well with a little LED. To, this also runs power, so to save power, you also push the button and turn it off, but it's still running. This is to use a compressor if you like, and mounting a compressor or something, you can easily put it on. Uh, it's very neat under there. I'm doing it the back here. It's just uh, put a hole through the uh, back there as well, just to drill hole. It's a compartment. The wires are already these are already pre-made. These panels. And they cost about sixty dollars. And uh, I'm very happy with the install and the system. Uh, later on in the future, when I get a fridge, this is just the little fridge I have in the back here. Um, this is the little can one. It costs twenty bucks. It's a hot one and uh, cold. Uh, system and this is just hooked on to the uh, main battery really and uh, if I'm out of the car and want the cans to cool down then I'll just leave it on the other one so I've got another one behind this other door just to send the power plug for Prados and uh, later on be more accessories and um, a rear drawer set with a fridge on it and sliders so it's another part of the video this is just my sub in the back uh, this is equipped with Alpine uh, DVD player and we'll have a sound system Alpine sound system later which will be another video thanks for watching